Today we're going to be talking about how to work with the command line of Windows, which is the command prompt, and uh, some of the things that makes it special, and some of the differences between the command line and PowerShell, and really the basic commands. Not every command, it's got a robust amount of stuff, but uh, enough to get you familiar with it, so if you're ever in a command prompt environment, you really kind of know how to navigate and do uh, a lot of the basics. So first, we're going to dive in here, and we're going to open it up. The best way to do that is there's several different ways. If you hit Windows key R, you get a run prompt. And you can actually type CMD there and open the command prompt. Or in some versions of Windows, you can right click on the start menu and then select command prompt or command prompt admin. And we'll talk about the admin in a second. And that's another way to launch the command prompt. However, some of these versions have PowerShell here instead of the command prompt. So I'll show you the difference. PowerShell, you can also search it too. So that shows me PowerPoint and PowerShell, but command prompt is right there if I type CMD or I can actually type command prompt. But uh, instead, I'm gonna type PowerShell and I'm gonna show you the difference. So command prompt and PowerShell look very similar, except one's blue and one's black. PowerShell is a lot more powerful, has a lot more complicated command sets it can do, but the basic command sets of command prompt also work in PowerShell. PowerShell is something you will definitely start using more uh, later on if you're into IT, but it's not something that you'll really use if you're just trying to do something basic without the GUI. So that's really what the command prompt is for, is to interface with Windows without Windows having to show you all the pictures. So let me show you some of the difference. This is Windows as a GUI or a graphical user interface. And it's got a start menu. It shows you, it can have pictures up here. I've gotten rid of all mine, but you can search things. You can edit the settings. It, you, you see all the buttons and pictures and programs all laid out for you. And you can even see what tasks are currently running. And you can right click on different things and get a context specific menu. These pictures and menus and things highlighting as I move the mouse around are all graphical and they're all user interfaces. They're all a way that a user can interact with Windows and see what they're doing and kind of be told what these different actions will do. Uh, the command prompt is another way for a user to interact with Windows, but it's without graphics. This is where a user can give text commands to Windows. This is similar to how the programs work behind the scenes, is they actually just do basic commands to Windows behind the scenes, and then that's how a program can actually work with the operating system, which is Windows. But we are going to interface with it ourselves. So the first thing I want you to know is that uh, when you open a regular command prompt, it opens into users and it opens into my name, which is my user. But if you open an admin command prompt, which you can also open by searching CMD, right clicking and saying run as administrator, it'll open to Windows System 32. I'm going to close the admin command prompt for now, but I want you to know that there's a difference. Anything ran in the administrator command prompt will be something only administrators can do. So uh, it'll run everything as an administrator. So this is the more powerful command prompt. However, this one will let you do anything that your user is allowed to do, like making save files and things like that. So that's what we're going to start with. First, the command prompt is really the same as Windows, more than you think, because it starts in a location. So you see C, users, Adam.morel. That's actually the location. So if I go here, and I look at my C drive, and I click this hard drive right here in the File Explorer. This is what this part of the GUI is called. In the File Explorer, I'm actually just at the base root of the C drive, the beginning of the C drive. And then if I go inside of Users, you can see here, if I click on this folder, that I'm really just in C colon slash users. The slash stands for a folder, and users is the name of that folder, and C is the name of the drive. So you can see, if I go inside of Adam Morel, I am now inside 
of my user. And you can look and it says C slash users slash Adam Morrell. There I am, C slash users slash Adam Morrell. That's the same thing. I'm just in a file location because that is what it's about. Do you see how all these different possible uh, selections are listed out? Well, if I type in a command, a very simple command, D-I-R, it stands for directory. Directory is another name for a file, or it's really just a place that holds other places. So this folder I'm in is a directory. Users, Adam Morrell, I'm in a directory. Every folder icon is actually a directory. So when you type D-I-R, that stands for directory. And then you hit enter. There we go. It didn't like the fact that I had left the screen. It shows me all of these things. In fact, maybe even some stuff that the graphical user interface didn't show me. Command prompt's a little tricky when you're scrolling because it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't like it when you use this because it moves way too fast. So instead use the arrow keys. But you can scroll down and see all the different applications that I have a chance or applications or directories or files or things that I have a chance to interact with. And so there's a lot of stuff here. You can just see it right here, the same thing. It's the same interactions. So uh, you wonder then, one of these is called desktop. And see, in desktop, there's a recycle bin, which is different uh, than normal uh, folders and stuff. So don't worry about the recycle bin, but you can see this folder called junk. I have a folder called junk on my desktop. The desktop is actually a directory. It's a directory that has a graphical presentation behind you. So it's just the one directory that your user folder decides to show you all the time, behind you all the time. That's why it's called the desktop. And we can actually interface with that the same way we'd interface with any folder. So I'm actually going to go inside of it. So how do I move directories? Well, CD is the command for change directory. So cd space, that first thing right here, that's the command. The space tells me, it tells Windows actually, the space tells Windows that I'm about to tell it to go to something. So this is the action and then I'm about to put the noun. So cd change directory, and what's the name of the directory? I want to go to desktop because I know desktop is right here. You can also go back a directory. Do you see how I added that directory there? I'm in a different place if I type dri. DIR, I'm sorry, I can see the junk folder. Uh, those dots, though, they represent going what you can do to go back a directory. So like I said, you can go back by hitting ch change a directory, cd space, dot, dot. That's just something you've got to remember. That moves you back a directory. cd space desktop will move you forward a directory. Back, forward. Oh, look, I can tab complete. Let me show you that again. So CD space, and I hit D, tab. I can tab through the different D options that I have. And that's a much faster way to move through it. So always remember to try and tab complete. And it'll save you from some spelling errors too, because if I misspell this, this it's not going to know. This is an error. The system cannot find the path specified. It's not going to know where I'm going. So CD space desktop. And you can see now I am in the desktop and the DIR command was just showing me what was inside. So now I want to make something. I want to make a directory. So I can actually type NK DIR and that means that I'm going to make a directory and I'm going to call it folder one and then hit enter. Look at this. Folder one is now on my desktop. It's also, you can see it here in the file explorer as well. And if I type dir, you can see it inside of command prompt. And there's folder one and jump. So what do I do to get inside of folder one? Well, I can type cd space folder one. Now I am inside of folder one. And if I type dir, I can see what's inside, which is nothing. This dot stands for where I am. And these two dots stand for how to get back. Remember? Just go in and out. Oh, see, I didn't type it right. CD folder one, and you can go in and out of folders. Something, I want to go back a couple of places because I want to show you something else that's really important. You can type in a full location. 
So I can type in cd c colon slash users slash Adam Morel slash desktop slash folder one. And that's going to put me inside of that location. So if you don't have to necessarily be right next to the folder you're getting in, you can go to a different folder. If I wanted to go to a different drive, I would just type in the drive name here. But I don't have any D drive right now, so there's no way I could do that. But if I had another drive, you could simply just type the letter of the drive, E maybe, and a colon, and that's how you would swap drives. All right, so now we're going to talk about how to launch files, save files, and uh, view files from the command prompt. So first, I want to take a brief intermission and show you why mine looks different. So you see the uh, green? Well, that's because you can right-click the top part of the window and then hit Properties, and you can change the font, the layout, the colors, anything you want. So that's why mine's green, because I like that classic green screen color, uh, and it's easy to see against the black. So, now back to it. I'm going to show you how to start applications. You can do things like type Start Chrome, and Windows knows what Chrome is, so that's actually going to open up Google. Now, you can also do things like Start Task MGR and that'll open up the task manager and show you everything that's running. So that's very cool, but you can also start things that Windows doesn't have directly mapped. So if you go, remember how to go back? You go back to the root drive, so you can go inside of your program files here. So I type dir to see all the files. Inside of it is program files, cd, program files. I'm going to tab complete, actually. There we go. And now if I type dir, you can see there's all sorts of things in here. So one of them is, oh, I used the bar instead of the arrow. I can just launch any of these programs when I go inside of this folder. These are all directories. See the DIR right here? It tells me that it's a directory, not necessarily a file. I'm going to go inside of the directory and launch CCleaner. So to do that, I need to type CD for change directory, C cleaner. I'm going to tab complete, and then type DIR to see what's inside of it. And then you see there's ccleaner.exe and ccleaner64.exe. Well, if I want to watch either one of these, I can type ccleaner64.exe, and we'll talk about what the 64 means another day. And just typing that in and hitting enter will actually launch the program which is all the start command is really doing, just without the file extension and the necessary location. So you can actually launch any file you want from the command prompt. So let's go back to the desktop. Remember how to do that? Type cd c colon slash users slash adam dot morel, because that's my user folder, slash yours, you're not going to be able to type this right here. You're going to have to type something different to get to your user folder. And type dir. Wait, nope. I'm sorry. That was me being dumb. Then type desktop. And then, uh, that's really all you need. And there we are. We're at the desktop. I can hit dir, and I can see the folder one and the junk folder. And like I said, the recycle bin is different. Um, it's the only exception to this rule. So I'm going to go inside of folder one. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to just stay on the desktop, and I'm going to create a text file. So I can just start Notepad, and now I can type a sample. And then I'm going to hit Save As, and I'm going to save it to my desktop as sample save there it is on my desktop now I can open that by typing sample.txt and I can open it up there but what if you wanted to view it inside of the command prompt you can actually type 
type, anything that's just plain text, you can type type sample.txt and see it typed down here, type a sample, which is what's exactly inside of this text file. Well, let's say I don't want that text file anymore and I want to delete it. There's one more command I'm going to teach you. It's the delete command, D-E-L. You can delete directories and files. So I'm going to type D-E-L sample autocomplete. So with the tab, remember, tab button's autocomplete. Del sample.txt, enter. It's gone. See, I deleted it. All right, so we're going to do a quick review. You can get to the command prompt a lot of ways. Once you open it, you can change directories with a CD and then type in the directory name. If you need to see the directory names or the file names, you can simply type dir for directory, and then you can see everything inside of that directory. And then if you want to create something, you can type mk and make a, another directory. I'm sorry, CCleaner, leave me alone, please. mk and um, new folder 22, I don't know, something random. Oh, sorry mkdir new folder 22 boom there's a new folder Sorry. you can start a program by either going to the exact location of the exe typing in the exe name and hitting enter or for certain programs that are common you can hit start and type in the name of the program like notepad and it will open right up so with notepad I can type anything I want and then I can save that anywhere I want, which I'm going to save it to my desktop. And I'm going to name this Yep. And then I'm going to, I can open it by typing yep.txt. And that opens the file. You can also delete it by typing del yep.txt. And that will delete the file. So there you go. Those are the basics of navigating the command prompt. Now there is a lot more you can learn. You can copy files. You can cut files. You can paste files. Uh, you can do. Um, you can add drives. You can add network drives. You can uh, edit user account stuff. You can change passwords. You can do all sorts of stuff in the command prompt. But if you can do these things, if you can do these things, then that means you've got a basic understanding of what you're doing in the command prompt and you're ready to learn more uh, as much as you need to learn as you need to learn it. So that is the command prompt basics. Thanks for hanging with me and I'll see you next time. That was the Command Prompt Basics, and you are watching Tech Dive. We have all sorts of stuff if you want to check out our website at techdive.live. It's under construction right now, so it looks a little sloppy, but it's got everything that we're into as a channel and a series of channels. Uh, we have more consumer bleh, We have more consumer stuff coming out soon, like more reviews. We're about to review the S8, uh, Galaxy S8 phone, and that's going to be exciting. And we got a uh, case review coming out as well, and that should come out very soon. So uh, thanks for sticking with us. Thanks for watching. Like if this video helped you out. Subscribe if you're looking for more videos like this one or any kind of uh, consumer tech review. And we're here to help. Leave a comment if you have any questions, and I'll see what I can do. Thanks for watching. Bye.